Hello, Jonathan here at the Colfax High Mill and Woodshop, working on a Valentine's Day gift that we could sell in our store. This is a hand milled piece of pine that we cut out on the CNC, including the groove, melted crayons into it, laser engraved the words, and then we're going to sell it in a store. So stay tuned to watch how I make this and then make one yourself. Okay. Before we started this project, we prototyped a bunch of different ones. I think I have a video on how this one was made. Um, this is one a student made. I really like this one a lot. Glue lay on board with a pocket in the center. Um, so you could push a, a photo in there. Here's another one, another glue lay on board with multiple pockets, crayons in one. And uh, just another pocket to put photos or maybe a snack tray. That's all covered in resin. Uh, the resin didn't actually come out so well, so we're actually gonna go, the students and I kind of work together to come up with their final prototype. And this is it here. It'll have a standalone base. Highlights of color from the crayon in the groove. You'll be able to order a laser special words on there. We'll laser engrave it. Uh, and then we'll sell it in our tree transformation webpage store. So this is our final product that the students and I came up with together uh, and I'll go through a quick overview on how it was made. I'm in Mastercam X9, a uh, great software for CNC and design. I created my geometry first and then after I created my geometry I created the toolpath. So the first toolpath is a pocket I selected both sides of that line to make sure it's inside. Then I selected contour to cut the whole part out. Um, there's a tool path so you can see them cutting the pocket and the cutout. When I'm all done, I verify with the animation and the isometric view. And you can see it cutting out the pocket first and then the overall cutout. I do have some tabs on there so it doesn't pop up. Um, so there's the animation or the verification. When I'm done with that, I make sure I save the file and then additionally I post it. So G1 is post. That takes all of this infer vector information and converts it into G code or numeric code. So I post it onto a flash drive and that's going to be my geometric code. It takes a lot of, a lot of power to drive the converter to, to make this G code, but here it is. And you can see it, it's all geometric code. G0 is rapid travel in the Z plane up to 0.255 of an inch. And then G90, those are the codes, kind of the set codes, the parameter codes. And then it travels through all those coordinates. There's a lot of code because of that pocket, it's zigzagging back and forth in that 3 8 inch wide pocket. And there's a final line of code, about 1500 lines of code. So let's go out in the shop and we'll take the flash drive out there and we'll run the part on our Forest Scientific. Okay, here we are on the CNC router. It's a Forest Scientific. Dog is Coco, shop dog. Uh, Forest Scientific 4x8 CNC router. Really beautiful tool. I'm using a quarter inch flat end mill here. This is cutting out the pocket between the two lines. And then here's my finishing cut. Then here's my contour cut coming around. There's around the base and I'm doing multiple passes here. The rule is usually never more than the, no more depth than the thickness or diameter of the cutter. So my depth of cut is set at 0.25. Here's a third one. That's just rough cutting a pocket out. It'll do that twice to get the overall depth. And then when it's done, it'll do like a contour pass to clean it up. So I'm all done on the CNC. I unscrew it from the CNC. I'm going to cut it out on the bandsaw here. Um, it should be really easy to cut out on a bandsaw. You don't have to do it closely at all because we're going to use a flush trim router bit to clean up those edges. So all I'm doing is taking it off, um, cutting them into separate pieces, and you can see how far away I am from my actual part. Try not to touch your part at all, better to leave too much on than, um, than actually scar your part. You might have to 
come out with the blade and enter from a few different areas. Okay, now I'm on the router table with my flush turn router bit. And you can see it's just going to clean up that edge. So it's a, always use a hold down stick. Never use these tools unless you're properly trained. Um, and that's cleaning up the edge. My fingers look closer than they were. And then when I'm all finished with the flush turn router bit, I could do a little bit of a round over bit if I want as well. Um, and then the orbital sander. So really sand it and clean it up. And then we're going to put the crayons in. So here's some little blue pieces of crayon. You want to make sure you cut the, uh, I just cut the paper off and I cut them into small little pieces so they'll fit around there. This is uh, small little pieces of crayon starting to melt and mesh together. Um, you don't, you want to use pretty low heat and not that much forced air because it'll just get mixed and turn into one single color. From here, um, you're going to go and sand it a little bit more. If there's any crayon overlay onto the part itself, you could sand that out. And then when you're all done with that, take it over to the laser engraver. Make sure your vacuum's on. This is a universal VLS 3.60, great tool. Um, and here I am laser engraving. I think this is actually a different one. And then when I'm all done laser engraving, oh, this is a different one because there's no crayon in there. So uh, yeah, here it is with different pieces of crayon in it. Um, yellow and red kind of look like spilt ketchup and mustard. And then I use the traditional wood tools to build the base for it and coated it in polyurethane. So there's the finished product.